out there looking good. Where's Pastor looking sharp? He is looking good. Don't he look like Akeem from Coming to America? <laughs> he is sharp. He got on his Moses sandals. Let my people go. Let my people go. I know I look good. Let my people go. Fast, I'm glad to see you looking like Denzel. Everybody sees you. I feel good. I'm glad to be around you. This side of the room is with me. This side of the room is staring at me like food in a microwave. <laughs> Are you done yet? Get us some extra dessert and then you'll be doing something. <laughs> but y'all look good. I see everybody all sharp. I got dressed up for this. I threw on my best white linen suit for y'all. My pointy cockroach killer blue suede <laughs> shoes. Just for y'all, my nice blue tie with the matching polka dot, and just for the Salem vote ride, I threw on my genuine Gucci watch. <laughs> That's right, baby. This here is Gucci. G U C H I. It's imported from Chinatown. You know, you got a quality watch when it says made on Canal Street. That's good right there. I had to get off of the six train to get this here watch. A lot of women out there tonight. It's like a Sadie Hawkins dance. How y'all doing? I see a lot of beautiful silver foxes in the house. How y'all feeling? Men, all five of y'all. How y'all doing? Because Lexi is always sharp as a tad. Good to see you, man. Y'all look, oh, this brother here. How you doing? I never met you. You look like the dude from Amistad, but it's good to see you, brother. Hey, you can be Amistad. If you Amistad, I got to take it off of me because I know people who don't know me are like, what is Sinbad doing crashing our party? <laughs> Why did Fred Hammond take off his glasses? <laughs> so I got to shift the focus and put it on you. I got you. I got you. <laughs> but y'all are a nice looking crowd. This is a nice function. This is one thing I've realized, Leroy. Right. Black folk respect. This and an airplane. We can't be late for this. If you late, you miss it. <laughs> That's it. And black folk was on time. I gotta give it up for black punctuality in 2017. It's a beautiful thing. Cause some of y'all know where I'm going with this. I don't know what it is, but for whatever reason, black folks sometimes come into work just a little bit later than everyone else. Especially if you work in corporate America or retail. But that's not where the audacity comes in. Not only do black folk come into work late, we come into work late with breakfast. We don't care, man, please. Ain't no sense me being late and hungry. That don't make no doggone sense. Two half rounds for a dollar, you bet you're behind. I'm gonna stop. I see a lot of women. I don't really have women jokes. It really was supposed to be like a pre-Father's Day thing. All the fathers in the house make some noise. See what I mean? Thank you, the three of you, thank you. It's like 900 women and four dudes. Yeah, yeah, fuck. Leroy, it's also very disproportionate like that when you hear these songs. Uh oh. Mother's Day has oodles of beautiful songs for women, right? I'll always love my mama. Beautiful song. Boys, the man has Dear Mama. There's all kind of stuff by the Supremes. Songs throughout history emulating and uplifting mothers, which I am all for. Now, a month later, it's Father's Day. What we got? Papa was a rolling stone. <laughs> what is wrong with this picture? Don't get me wrong, it's a beautiful song. Right? It's probably Leroy in the beginning. Bump, bump. Bump, bump, bump. It's a beautiful song, but it's not the most positive portrayal of us, right? You know, so how was Papa? Hey man, wherever he laid his hat, that was his home. I'm like, okay, that's, that's not the best thing in the world. We need more positive songs for dads. And those of you who are wondering that are over 45 and 50, daddy's home does not count as a Father's Day song. That's a whole different type of daddy right there. It's not the same type of daddy. Daddy's home to stay. That is not nobody's father. That's probably some dude coming from jail and his girl is glad to see him. We need more positive male songs. Salem, you know what else I like? That's why I come here as much as possible even though I'm married to my wife. My church is in Queens, but Salem has a good choir. Good choir, good minister of music, 
good songs. I have you, the worst thing to ever do is to get invited to somebody's church who just has to have you come to their church because their church is great. And you get there and it's some fly-by-night floor, you know, just out of the ordinary, no good church. You know you're in the wrong church when the entire choir is singing those songs from the 70s that none of us, we all knew them, but we knew that we had no business singing them. People 50, 60, and 70 years old, y'all know where I'm going with this. Black folk, we were the only ones back in the days singing those songs that always glorified somebody cheating or somebody had an extra girlfriend on the side or somebody was fooling with someone's wife. And whatever reason, those songs were always number one. Don't act like y'all don't know I'm staring at me like food in the microwave. Y'all remember this one, if love and you is wrong. <laughs> number one on the charts, 1970, Luther Ingram. And he was proud of his terrible behavior. Am I wrong to fall so deeply in love with you? Knowing I got a wife and two little children. He didn't even say children, he said two little children. Depending on me too. Those songs were terrible. Cheating in the next room. Who's making love to your old lady while you was out making love? Secret lovers as we lay. All those songs were not good. They were catchy. They were popular. Our people listened to them growing up. Leroy, you know another one that I didn't realize was along that order, that same genre? Any of y'all out there remember the song, The Clean Up Woman? Yeah. Woo, that was one, boy. <laughs> we used to sing it. Black folk would sing that back in the day, drinking Boone's Farm, Strawberry Hills, Tangeray if it was payday. The Clean Up Woman was no joke. She was not a maid. Trust me, though. She was not a maid. She was tough. She really cleaned up. Some of them other songs, you didn't realize what was going on until we were older. Like, it's a thin line between love and hate. That song is a telltale song if ever. Because if y'all noticed in the beginning of the song, the woman is very nice and she's tolerant and she's patient, right? He come home three, four o'clock in the morning and the first thing she said is, are you hungry, honey? <laughs> Not hungry, are you hungry? H-O-N-G-R-O-Y. Are you hungry, honey? Did you eat yet? Oh, but by the end of that song, he was in trouble, fellas, wasn't he? There he was in the hospital. Bandaged from feet to head. In a state of shock. Just that much from being dead. I bet he didn't come home at three o'clock no more. Most famous song in the world that was cheating and was terrible. Me and Mrs. Mrs. Jones. Mrs. Jones. Billy Paul. Number one on the charts, 1972, for 13 weeks. And even I knew at eight years old that it wasn't Mr. Jones singing the song. <laughs> but y'all look so good. Anybody out there celebrating any birthdays in June or July? No birthdays? July, happy birthday. Who else? Did someone throw money at me? No. No other birthdays? That's a different show. Where? Who? <laughs> Happy birthday, soon to be birthday for Velma. Give Velma some love. God bless you, sister. God bless. Thank See how you. I did that? That's how you wish someone I happy birthday. In person, face to face. Not this garbage that you see on Facebook. You've known this person 30 or 40 years. Your birthday.